Jeff Grubb, Games Beat. And this time we're talking about the Nintendo Switch. Uh, we have a little bit of a report on GamesBeat.com. It is that the Nintendo Switch specs clearly show it's not going to be as powerful as the PlayStation 4. Um, Dean Takahashi reports, and that's the uh, headline of the article, that it's less powerful than the PlayStation 4. Uh, he got a few sources, and they confirm it's basically going to have a Maxwell chip. That's the previous generation of NVIDIA's Tegra processor, really all its processors, um, as opposed to the modern version, the latest generation of Pascal chips. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to read the, uh, the first here, the nut, the nut in the graph, the first two paragraphs here. The Nintendo Switch game console coming next year won't be more powerful than Sony's three-year-old PlayStation 4, according to sources who talked to GamesBeat about the upcoming Nintendo console's specifications. GamesBeat has confirmed from two sources who don't want to be identified that the Switch's graphics are based on NVIDIA's older Maxwell architecture, not the new Pascal graphics technologies that the chipmaker introduced earlier this year. The semi-custom NVIDIA Tegra processor in the Nintendo machine is still powerful enough to play typical Nintendo cartoon-style games like the Mario series, series, but don't expect the highest-end games we're seeing on the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One to run on the Switch. Um, I would uh, So I would add here that we still don't know exactly what will and won't run on here, but the Maxwell chip that is inside of the Switch is based on the old Tegra processor. It's not the new Pascal, and what that means is a few things that we, we know for sure. It doesn't have the, uh, the energy efficiency of the Pascal technology. So let's touch on what is different between Pascal and Maxwell real quick. I'm like making those rhymes and those words shouldn't rhyme. Pascal, Maxwell. Yeah, I guess a little bit. So Maxwell is the chip that you would have seen in your GTX 970, your 980, uh, your 980 tie. The Pascal is what's, po is what's powering the GTX 1080, the 1070, the 1060, the new Titan X. And the difference between these chips is basically the size of their process. Uh, the the Pascal generation has a 16 nanometer process as opposed to the Maxwell's 28 nanometer. What that means is all the little, you know, the, the, you know, all the little silicon dots on these chips that make all the graphics magic happen. When it comes down to it, the Maxwell needs more power to, to, uh, but more energy to power its chip because those chips are bigger. Uh, you know, this is kind of put, this is really simple talk. This is a really simple way of explaining it. But those chips need more energy, they produce more heat, and they don't create as great of result uh, as of a result as the Pascal. Since the Pascal is, uh, uses a smaller die, um, a smaller chip, it can do just as much or more than Maxwell with using less energy and producing better, better results uh, and less heat. So, that's what makes Pascal so wonderful for things like laptops. We're seeing a lot of laptops that have desktop GTX like 1060 or even 1070 chips inside of them because those chips, uh, even, even when they're scaled down from the desktop form to fit into a laptop, are producing less heat and giving you just as awesome results. Um, and they're also pretty light on battery. They, they don't need as much energy. So for the Switch, using a custom version of the Maxwell, it's not getting a lot of those benefits. So that means uh, Nintendo and NVIDIA will have to cut the scale back, uh, scale back elsewhere. Very likely that's going to me mean processing power. Once the chip is plugged in to a power source, you know, to, to work on a TV, I'm sure that NVIDIA has got plenty of ways to overclock that, uh, overclock that thing, uh, put a fan on it so it can, it can get really hot and still be safe and be able to produce the results you want. Um, in that situation, it probably will be pl plenty powerful enough for most games. Um, on the handheld, they're going to scale it down to all the all the games will scale down to fit the 720p screen. Um, but you know they're not going to have that consistent power source, so they won't be able to run a fan all the time. Uh, they won't be able to you know they're going to have to run off battery, and that's going to take a you know a Maxwell chip. No matter what, is going to take a lot of that juice, um, especially if you're running games all on it all the time. That's not something that the the Tegra was necessarily built for. It wasn't built necessarily to run games 24-7 uh, with the screen on at all times. It was built for NVIDIA's tablet, which was going to be doing other things as well. 
So my big concern is battery life. Um, if your big concern is graphics, I, I think I can understand that. I, I, I Maybe I'm a little concerned as well, but I'm not super worried that the Maxwell chip necessarily means that uh, there's going to be this huge gap between the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and then the Switch over here. Um, chances are that the reason that Nintendo showed off games like Skyrim and NBA 2K in its sizzle reel in the, in the Switch trailer is because it is actively working to make sure those kinds of games work on this system. Now, that might mean that, you know, in their 720p format, when they're scaled down uh, to run at a lower resolution, maybe even run at four, uh, at a 540p resolution and then scaled up to 720p, um, in that, like, on that, in that format on the handheld, they're going to be just fine. They're going to be, you know, really, really great looking Vita games, uh, kind of in that range, uh, where you can't even tell the difference anymore. And they do look like an, maybe an Xbox one game played on a handheld. Um, on the TV, however, that might be the issue. If the Maxwell chip can't be overclocked enough to make up the difference between the PlayStation four and the Xbox one and the switch, uh, you're going to get a situation where the games just don't look as good on the TV as they do when you're playing with an Xbox one or PlayStation four. But to that, I say, if your big concern is, is graphics and not the ability to play Skyrim on your TV and then Skyrim on the handheld as you're, you know, walking around at, you know, the airport or whatever. Um, if your concern is graphics, the, the PC is always there for you. The PC, you know, my PC has got a GTX 10, 1080 in it and that's got Pascal. And that can handle Battlefield 1, Skyrim, Titanfall 2, everything else just fine. Doesn't struggle at all. I don't need a Switch right now if my, if my concern is are graphics and third-party video games. Um, I don't think you should be buying the Nintendo Switch if your concern is visual fidelity. Uh, I think this report confirms that, that assumption, that kind of sort of that starting point when you're approaching the Switch. Um... So let, let's go ahead and uh, take a little, little, little bit further look into this story. Um, Dean continues to write, The Maxwell chip may be okay, and the Switch's high-definition vi visuals may still be satisfying to a lot of gamers, who will also appreciate its dual purpose of being played in the home as a console and on the run as a portable system. But the Kyoto-based Jap Japanese company was in such a rush to replace its failing Wii U that it couldn't wait for the updated Pascal version of the graphics technology, sources told us. This means that the Switch doesn't have as much visual horsepower as the PS4 when played on a television, and it may, be, it may not be able to handle 4K graphics. Well, yeah. If Nintendo had waited for Pascal, it would have, to, it would have had to push back the launch date of the Switch. We're not so sure if the Switch is weaker than the Xbox One as the performance may be close. Okay, so... So Dean's even saying it's possible that it might be right there behind the Xbox One. But I want to touch on another point. And that is this, uh, the idea that Nintendo wants to replace the Wii U so fast that they're, they're you know, rushing this out. Um, I don't necessarily think if that's the case. My thinking is, is that they've learned a lesson from the Wii U. The Wii U might have been, once been a cool console, but it was in development for so long that by the time it debuted, Nintendo was like, okay, here's this tablet console or controller for your console how amazing is that and everyone turned to them and said we've been using an ipad for the last two or three years and nintendo's response well it, response was well we've been de developing this for four years and everyone else said we don't care we have an ipad please leave us alone nintendo you're being creepy right now get stop looking in my window at me playing angry birds on my, on my ipad mini seven inch 2013 um so I think the, the lesson was is that Nintendo does not want to wait with the Switch because it thinks it has a cool idea and it doesn't want to have any possibility that someone is going to come in underneath them and introduce something even better that makes the Switch look stupid. They, they, you know, they have this idea of a home console that could turn into a, a handheld. Um, it's, not the first, I, it's not the first one, uh, the first thing to do this. NVIDIA themselves had the uh, the shield and I did a video on that that kind of it's a very similar idea but Nintendo is doing it all in one neat little package and the earlier it debuts this concept to the market the more novel it will appear and 
I don't think Nintendo wants to risk that novelty losing any of its edge. And that's the big reason that they're rushing this out. Not necessarily that they want to replace the Wii U. Although, of course, I'm sure that's part of it. Um, and, I, and I think we've, we've seen that. I think that's the reason Nintendo's kind of been this way all along with the Switch, where they didn't want to talk it up. They, they've been very quiet about it. And now they have a very short window from debuting it in November or October, I think, with that first trailer. And now talking about it in January, one more time, and then launching it in March. They just, they're doing this fast and in, in a compact window where they can just hit everyone with all the information at once and get you excited about it, get you to buy it, and hopefully not get under, you know, sw swept by the feet by someone else. Um, if they did want to wait for the Pascal Tegra, it sounds like they would have been waiting into 2017 well into the year well late into the year um and that's i that seems like something to know definitely didn't want to do they're ready to go and they want to get it out and i, I think that's a good sign if they think this is going to work um i'm i'm kind of willing to see for myself i'm not where this is not a deal breaker for me maxwell of course here's the thing no chip no you know one little component inside of a console has ever been a deal breaker for me um and if it is for you you have different priorities than than me when I look at a system, I just want to know what's the end experience going to be like? Is it, does it work how I want it to work every time? Does, if it's a handheld, is the battery okay? Um, and, you know, what are the games? Are the games good? Are the games different or are they um, at least comparable to everything else out there so that I feel like I'm not spending money or putting money into a hole to get a, a, an inferior experience? Now, that's a, you know those are a lot of things we still don't know if the switch is going to accomplish if they're going to if it's going to meet those standards but it still could the maxwell chip won't really necessarily dictate whether or not it can accomplish those goals and i think nintendo's close relationship with nvidia kind of ensures that this is it's probably going to end up playing games quite a bit better than maybe we can expect just based on the name maxwell and that chip um I think that's going to do it. There's a ton more on this story. Um, you guys should check it out. Uh, Dean talks about 4K a little bit. It's not, There's no way it's going to do 4K. It might do 4K video because that's something uh, NVIDIA's Tegra chip has already done in the Switch before. Or not the Switch, but the Shield. Um, I'm going to keep getting those messed up. Um, and there is... Yeah, he's, he kind of goes into that stuff here. Uh, but, you know, there, he also talks about the possibility of Nintendo, you know, revising... The, the switch in a couple years with the Tegra Pascal. Um, and if the, the system sells well, that would make sense. That's a good way to kind of upgrade. Um, and it wouldn't leave the Maxwell too far behind, especially if it did it, if they, uh, if Nintendo upgraded the system in 2018 or something like that, or, you know, 2018 or early 2019. But okay. I think that's going to do it. Jeff Grubb, gamesbeat.com. You can get this full story from Dean Takahashi at gamesbeat.com. Read the full thing. It's very interesting. Um, but until I see you in the next video, adios, amigos, um, and I'll catch you then.